So I'm going to ask that the University of South Florida would come forward as President Saunders and our team are leaving the table. Well, yeah, after a while you get like kind of good at it because you've been doing it all day long. <laughs> you kind of figure it out. <laughs> By the end of the day, you know. I know. Maybe not. I mean, come on. We're almost done. Where do we have to go? Because it's going to be um, rainy. Where do we have to go for this reception? And what time does it start? Just around the corner. You get in the car. You're going to have to get in the car. Oh, and the car ride? Yeah, so that's right around the corner. So we got the total number of bikes. People are so compelled. Uh, I know they also were invited. Uh, I think that's in the Carlos in the restaurant. Yeah. I'm going to be 60 years old. And what does that mean? <laughs> going downtown at 2.30 and 8.30 in the morning. I know. Well, here, because I mean, if people are sitting in the signal, I mean, you know, come on. But, um, the so norm that I have is something that's nearby. It's a human restaurant that they recommend it. Yeah, so we do have to. All right. Are you ready? I thought we'd give everybody some Red Bull right now. Give you the energy drink. Get you moving and get you. I know. We'll do. We'll make it the Green Bull. Gold, green and Gold Bull. Whatever the energy drink to get you all uh, ready. And uh, I know that we stand in between all of the spirits and reception that we're going to be having for everyone. USF and Moffitt Cancer Center are hosting the reception this evening. So I know that we should be in the speed talking mode so that uh, we move everybody through very fast. But I'm delighted uh, that we traveled really far, so the, all of our trustees, and Stephanie Goforth was here all morning and part of the afternoon, but couldn't stay. So why don't we start with our student trustee and introduce yourself, please. From? 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 Oh, from uh, no. <laughs> I'm Byron, a trustee, and I'm from the Management Security Center in that area. Ralph Wilcox, Provost. John Ramel, Chair, and I work for this lady. No. <laughs> I'm Rhea Law, um, Media Press Chair, and uh, me too. I'm from Tampa. Lou Seiko, from, I'm a trustee from uh, Lakeland Watson Clinic. So uh, we also have, I, I'm, I'm taking advantage of some introductions. We also have in the, um, in the uh, audience here, we have a brand new person who hasn't even begun yet. He's starting July 1st. His name is John Long. Where are you, John? He is our uh, senior vice president as of July 1st and chief operating officer, and you have a press release in your um, in your uh, 3.7 billion dollar brochure, <laughs> and he is he was retired for about three weeks from the Air Force, and is joining us as I said in the beginning of July. We also have um, Arthur Guilford, who is our regional chancellor for Sarasota Manatee. There you are. And uh, Margaret Sullivan, who is also regional chancellor from USF St. Petersburg. There you are. There we go. And 
several other senior VPs. Karen Holbrook, Vice President, Senior Vice President for Research, Innovation, and Global Affairs, and Joel Munberg, who is Senior Vice President for Advancement. Okay. All right, here we go. USF, and this is about the system. USF is um, uh, what we call a very high impact global research university. And a modern university is a global university. And what we're going to talk about is um, all of what we've accomplished. And the very first slide will show you about our patent impact. And this is very exciting because we are working with the Board of Governors press release to get something in the Wall Street Journal. And um, this is an organization of about um, top 300 institutions, organizations worldwide. And they're ranked, and there were only 14 universities. And we were listed as ninth at, uh, in uh, patents in 2010. And what's important is that we've been successful in patenting a wide range of new technologies from high profile drug discoveries, such as the antidepressant that is now in the third clinical trial with Targacep and AstraZeneca. And we, we're really very hopeful that this will pop and do, do very well. Um, the development of new stem cell therapies to dance chair that allows people with disabilities to move freely and underwater laboratory equipment which can operate uh, aut autonomously in the ocean depths. So the patents are very exciting. USF has founded uh, an organization called the National Academy of Inventors and we are uh, worldwide now even though, though it's called national and it is something that um, is very exciting ar around the, the world and uh, many, many, many institutions have joined this it, and it's, uh, it's quite a prestigious organization. The, um, you know, what I've always said is for ever since um, the Land Grant Act was uh, started in the 1862, it was all about public universities being an economic impact for the, for the country. So land was set aside in 1862 because at that time the economy was agriculture. And so you see a lot of A&Ms. Texas A&M is the land grant university. And they're the universities that have agriculture. That was the economy of the time. And as we move through the, the United States and the kind of changes that have gone on in the nation, it still is the responsibility of public universities to be an economic driver for the nation. And now, the, it, now you see the nation has changed in uh, the economy, not completely out of agriculture, but certainly it has a big impact in the cities. So the study that we've done is throughout the system, and uh, USF has a $3.7 billion economic impact every year, uh, particularly in the Tampa Bay region, but in the state of Florida. And we do a lot of public-private partnerships, which is critical. When you talk to the governor, the governor always says, you've got to have more public-private partnerships, that that's very important. As of spring of uh, this year, 2012, you will see downtown Tampa that um, Camels building, Camel, not like the animal, but Camel's the Center for Advanced Medical Learning and Simulation. And this is something that is very different for this region of the United States, and it is all about advanced training. And I think um, uh, um, Chair Parker. Would you, didn't you take out a gallbladder in that simulation? That's right. That's right. Yes, you took out. It's about how doctors can become much more sophisticated cool. in new surgeries, cool. working on very, very, very uh, human-like mannequins. 
and we'll be bringing people in from all over the world to learn different kinds of techniques. And this uh, medical simulation center is going to be a hub and it will be ready to go for the Republican National Convention next year. And we're um, working very closely with the governor's office and hope that the governor will use the Camels building as his site for the state of Florida during the Republican National Convention. We also have a very close relationship, of course, with Moffitt Cancer Center, and you have some materials in front of you. But with Moffitt, um, Moffitt Cancer Center started because of Lee Moffitt, who is um, well known, and I think he was the Speaker of the House, and he did have cancer, and he is fully recovered from it. He was a charter class member of USF, and so you will see when we go to the reception how Moffitt Cancer Center is right in the center of our campus. It's right in the middle of our campus, and it's very much a part of USF. And so you can talk about it as the acad we, we provide the academic degrees, and we also have, in terms of our residencies, we have 708 residencies. The only one that has more residencies in the state of Florida is University of Florida. We have more than Miami, more than all the other of the other um, uh, medical schools in the state, and. Moffitt is one of our sites that we have our medical residencies, and you'll see some of our residents at the reception this evening. You will also see a phenomenal program that we have with Moffitt called the Cancer Biology Program. It's a doctoral program, and some students from the Cancer Biology Program will also be there tonight as well. And then you can go down and see the Villages, SRI, Draper Labs, um, SRI is a Stanford Research Institute. They came to us because of our uh, marine sciences and wanted to work for us, with us, in marine sciences. And they've built a building um, in in uh, St. Petersburg, so they could be close to our marine sciences and also to the Florida Oceanography, um, the FIO, Florida Institute of Oceanography, which is 21 institutes and universities around the state, and it's hosted at the um, uh, ocean, uh, at our marine sciences in St. Petersburg. We have a nationally ranked entrepreneurship program, Nielsen, Blue Cross, and you can see the others, uh, Ritz-Carlton with USF Sarasota Manatee, Pointer Institute with USF St. Petersburg, and of course, we've started a new program for it with international students called INTO, and it's a public-private partnership. Very, very successful. Well, when you talk about New Florida and USF, we, we meet the goals of the state with our uh, 10,835 degrees from last year, but this year we were up 500 more degrees. We have 11,364 total degrees across the USF system, 41% of those degrees are um, in the areas of emphasis, the STEM degrees. And uh, we know that that's part of the new Florida. We know how important that is. So as a result, we are um, really very much in line with what the state is looking for. Many of you have uh, heard about the, um, the different numbers of students, we have 5,121 first time in college students. We have 8,286 transfer students. Now the, the slide that President Hitt put on the board was about AA degree students. And it showed that we had 2,000, what was it, 2,400, those are students that have the AA degree, but we have many students that transfer over from, say, Hillsborough Community College, which has not gone for a year, and they transfer over sometimes before they have the AA degree, take another course, and they get the AA degree. And we have 
many, many students that transfer from other four-year institutions around the state. So we, our full and total transfer population is 8,286. 8, um, we have uh, 500 students a year that go into our Honors College. Our Honors College average SAT is 1,356. Um, and um, we're very proud that this, uh, this is a real nice feature of the University of South Florida. We are ranked number eight in the nation among 4,000 institutions as a commitment to uh, student veterans, and we are ranked as one of the most student ve uh, friendly to veterans across the nation. And um, I wanted to bring up something that I think is really important for all of us. That is the Pell Grant. If you look at the, the 10 top users of Pell Grants, you will see at least five Florida universities as the top users of Pell Grant. So you have FIU, USF, and not in any order, FIU, USF, UCF, UF, FSU, and there may be another one, FAMU might be, it might be six. But these Pell Grants are very important to the state of Florida. And the federal government right now is looking to cut Pell Grants. They give $11 billion of Pell Grants every year, uh, this past year, and they're looking to take a lot of this money and, and uh, fix the budget with this. So it will have an impact on our state. And in addition, Perkins loans are going to be um, uh, phased out as of 2000, 2014. So when we look at financial aid, we're going to have something very serious to deal with in the state of Florida because so many of our students are Pell Grant students as well as Perkins Loan students. The other item I wanted to mention is we had, I do a lot nationally as you know, and we had the main, the main um, CEO of NIH, the National Institutes of Health, come and speak to our group. And what we asked him and said to him is, and their budgets are getting cut, and we said, please, what you're doing to us now through your national grants is you're requiring the universities to put up so much of the match in order to get these grants. That is really tough because when all of the states and all of the states except for maybe Wyoming are, is getting cut, all of the states are saying we can't afford to match that much when, you know, with NIH. And NIH is looking at us and saying, too bad, too bad, this is the way it's going to be. So what we're seeing is squeezing coming from all over, all over different areas. We're very proud of Hillsborough County Schools who have gotten a million, a hundred million dollars from the Gates Grant. We work very closely with Mary Ellen Elia and what uh, the kinds of projects that she has. We work very closely with the, um, the, college, the college of Education and the College of Education at USF St. Petersburg just received a half million dollar grant from, uh, grant from the Bill and Gates, um, Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation as well. So you look at our research. We are number two in the state, folks, number two in the state in terms of our research grants and contracts. $400 million a year in research grants and contracts. This year coming up, we hope to get the largest grant that we've ever received and we are just waiting for the announcement to come in. $77 million to one researcher for diabetes research. Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. We have, um, as you can see in our research strategy, we work very much in environmental sciences, sustainable communities, integrated neurosciences and Alzheimer's. We have the bird Alzheimer's on our site here. 
diabetes, of course, and autoimmune disorders, uh, veterans reintegration, again, with McDill Air Force Base right here, SOCOM, CENTCOM, we work so closely, the busiest, not the biggest, the busiest VA is attached to my bridge with the University of South Florida Tampa. We work very, very closely with them with the needs and the issues that veterans have. And we, it, we are really pleased to be so veteran friendly here um, at USF. Um, going right along, you can see that we have a USF system plan. We represent um, eight to 10 counties, depending on which you want to look at, whether it's the SUS or the way we were originally from SUS. Ten, eight to 10 counties, we have about three and a half to four million people that we serve as our public university. And we um, look very much and say we give local autonomy, regional impact, and a national and international reputation. And let me say that the way we work is very similar to our peers, our national peers. Our national peers are Rutgers, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Ohio State. And why did we pick those? We picked those because they're metropolitan areas. They have medical schools. They have regional campuses that are separately accredited, and they're high, um, the highest category of research according to Carnegie. They're high research levels. So one of the benefits that we see as a USF system is the number of dollars that we can cost share and save for the state labor negotiations, purchasing, general counsel, administrative systems, audit, research infrastructure, foundation infrastructure, international global in infrastructure, library efficiencies, athletic NCAA affiliations. Um, and, and so we built with that a strategic plan for the system. And in our system strategic plan, we have one, goal one is excellence, access, and success. Let me just stop there. The University of South Florida, Tampa, has 29,000 applications every year. We take in approximately 4,000 first time, four to 5,000 first time in college students. So what we do is these are students that want to come to USF many of them, they apply to many of the Florida universities. But what we say is, while you, you, we, we are not able to accept you at USF Tampa, you can be accepted at USF uh, St. Petersburg. And with that, we are giving them access. We really, really hope that next year, our next um, session of the BOG, that we will be able to have our uh, USF Sarasota Manatee be permitted to offer freshman and sophomore along with junior, senior, because they do have a community college that is four year, a state college. And um, we really need to give them some of the students that apply to USF Tampa, they can go to U USF Sarasota Manatee, which is awesome. And, um, that's the same thing that we will be doing with USF Polytechnic. We have research, economic leadership, community engagement, USF Tampa and USF St. Petersburg are classified by Carnegie as the highest level of engagement with our communities. It is our responsibility across all of the USF system to be economically a part of and engaged in our community. That is who we are as a public university. Um, oop, well, let's see. We've got academic administrative collaboration, communication, and of course, expanded and diversified resources. Student success is very, very important. 
you, everybody has commented about differential tuition and what we've done with differential tuition, and I can say that many of the same things that other universities have done, advising as well as um, uh, professors so that we can teach classes on, uh, with the students that, that we have. We're looking to reshape the enrollment in the on the Tampa campus. We're not looking to grow the Tampa campus. Right now, we have about 40,000 students on the Tampa campus. That is about as much as we can handle. So we're not looking to grow. But we are looking to reshape the enrollment on the Tampa campus because the, what we're looking, major research universities across the country have 25% graduate and the rest undergraduate. We're not quite there. We have um, a, approximately, we're about, what, 22% graduate? About 22% graduate. So our shift in, in terms of our, um, our, our uh, enrollment is very important and to, to get that, um, that kind of uh, um, enrollment pattern. We also are bringing in a lot of postdocs, and that's helped us tremendously. It helps us in our profile, and it helps us all the way around. While many places use US News and World Report for their measures, we have used for years, since two th uh, 2007, we have used a different measure, and we've been benchmarking against a different um, uh, a group called the Top American Research Universities. And they use nine different criteria to measure your rankings. And when I started in, in my first five years, we were ranked 62nd in, at the time in terms of top public universities. Last month, in the 2010 report we rele that was released, we were 27th, along with FSU, 27th in the country for top American research universities. So in the next five years, what we want to do is turn our attention again to benchmarking to the top 34 public AAU institutions. We want to be AAU eligible, ready to go, should the presidents ever decide we want to get there in that AAU eligibility. And we're confident and uh, we're proud of our accomplishments in our research and graduate education, tech transfer, but we do have to work in certain areas. And some of the areas that we need to work on are graduation rates. We've moved up three percentage points and um, we're 51%, 51.5%. Three percent. That is not good enough, but we we are doing everything and moving our student success profile so that we move up in in that graduation rate. That is very very important to us. We're very proud of our first year retention rate at 86 percent. So we have a lot in place right now. We are meeting in our student success um, retreats. We bring in the people that mow the lawn. We bring in everybody that students will run into because it's all part of, it, of the organization to make students stay and be happy and graduate from USF. Um, national model. As I go around looking at the national issues that we have, there are items that they bring up every single time. Access, affordability, accountability, and competitiveness. We have access through our USF system. We have affordability through the efficiencies that we work on and through, of course, the state of Florida and what they've been working out with their tuition. Accountability is one of the measures that I think we are really premier on. We have one of the best, um, me the, Graham, what's your, the title of your area is? 
decision support, strategic planning decision support. They crunch numbers all the time. We have a notebook on every measure possible at this university, and we measure it against our benchmarks. We measure it also against uh, all the state universities and our, um, and our colleagues nationally. Um, we are competitive. What, what do we want to do in our future? Improve graduation rates, lower student faculty ratio with additional funds. Like everybody else, we can hire more professors, National Academy scholars, and um, we, we want to work very, very closely with um, others in terms of our medical program and the competitiveness and all we do in USF Health. It is the most creative, entrepreneurial program, um, I think, ever. And um, uh, I think it's just something that we, we want to be very, very competitive and that is going to be something that you'll see also in our LBR. So with that, let me just say we rock <laughs> and I hope that you are as proud of USF as we are. We always have things to do and we have a laser focus to get them done. Thank you. Any questions? More. You do rock. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Madam President, how many uh, medical students do you graduate a year? We have graduated about 128 a year, but we've, um, we have a new and innovative program, and it's called the Select Program, and that will add another 120 to it. It's um, a collaboration with Lehigh Valley um, in Pennsylvania, Lehigh Valley Hospital in Pennsylvania. And uh, students are selected not just by their, SA, uh, their MCAT scores um, and their grades, but they're selected through their emotional IQ. People wonder why physicians with all their learning aren't more friendly and hospitable. And, and so we're, we're looking at emotional IQ for, as well as all the rest. You mentioned something about 700 residency. 708 do, residencies. So, so do all your uh, students uh, get to go to residency in, in, in around here? Yes. No. Well, let me, let me say we don't yes, want no. them all to go. We don't want them all to go here. We, you know, uh, part of the prestige of your program is that you, we have students that go to Dana-Farber and Mayo Clinic, and that's part of the prestige right. of your medical school. But all of our students, all of our students are matched. All of our students are matched, always. So how many and percent we, of them are in Florida? We have about 56 percent, and it's the highest percent of, of any other program stay in the state and then end up probably working here because they're in the state. So we, the also bring, we also bring residents from all over the United States to have some residencies as well. You bring them here? We bring them here. Do you know that the state of Florida has fewer residencies, total residencies, than the city of Philadelphia? That's correct. And like one quarter of New York. Right. Something like that. Right. Right. So um, we, we have... Um, about uh, seven affiliated hospitals that we send them to um, all around. But our main teaching hospital is uh, Tampa General, Tampa General, which is downtown. And we're six, we provide 60% of the doctors are um, USF docs. Wonderful. Thank you. Dr. Marshall? Uh, Madam President, you uh, talked about your transfer students. Yes. And you remarked that you are not looking to grow on the Tampa campus. Right. But we are people, looking to grow on the, the on the other regional institutions. Uh, well, St. Pete, Sarasota, Polytechnic. Yeah. Uh, I was about to say that the people of Tampa haven't gotten the message about you're not growing, they're continuing to reproduce. Uh, <laughs> 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 so do you maintain any regular contact with the other institutions, particularly the state colleges, to? Yes. Go ahead. 
Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, as I said, Hillsborough Community College has not gone four year. Out of the 28 campuses, they're one of the eight that have not gone four year yet um, because uh, we can never tell what'll happen, but we have a very good working relationship with them. We have a very good working relationship with St. Pete College. We have a good working relationship with Polk Community College and we're trying to work out a relationship with Manatee Community College. That's been a little harder since the, a new president com, has come on board and set up a four year and is waving the flag and all that. So it, it's, it, it is what it is. Great. But from what I've learned from the chancellor, he said every one of the universities has at least one <laughs> that's not, not as copacetic as the others. Wow, are we ready? Okay, everybody, everybody, put up their first finger. <laughs> now your little finger. Go balls! <laughs> now again, thank you, um, Dr. Great Ginsburg, job. for your presentation, and thank just you. thank you so much to all the members of your um, board of trustees for taking the time on a Wednesday afternoon to come and share great information about your university and your plans for the next year. So again, thank you very much.